Okay, solutions to problem 49 off the GRE subject math practice test. Uh, back to group theory. We want to know what is the largest order of an element. The order of an element is the number of times you would need to apply um, that thing to get it back to the identity. That's a weird way of saying that. The power to which you'd have to raise an element to make it equal to the identity. Sure. What is the largest order of an element? Group of permutations of five objects. This uh, is commonly referred to as the symmetric group on S5 here. Um, so a couple of things. First off, any permutation, which is what we're talking about here, can always be written as a product of distinct cycles. That's important. So what I'm saying is I have five objects. Maybe I call them A, B, C, D, and E. And what I'm going to do is permute those five. So you pause the video, permute them wherever the hell you want. Think about where you're taking A. Think about where these five guys end up. Like maybe I have A going all the way over to E and then B goes over to C, sure. And C goes back to B, fine. And D goes to A and E goes, where have I not gone yet, to D. So what I'm going to do is start with this and permute them to here. It's a perfectly good permutation. I've shuffled these five up somehow. Um, it might, it shouldn't be too surprising to know that I can express this permutation as a product of distinct cycles. And so the way I do that is I just pick any element I want, A for example, and I ask myself the question, where does it end up? A ends up at E. So I'll write A, E. And then I ask myself the question, well, where does E end up? E ends up at D. So I got A, E, D right here. And then I say, where does D end up? And D ends up at A. So note that I've made a cycle right here. A goes to E, E goes to D, D goes back to A. I have a cycle. So I will close this cycle right here. Once I close this cycle, I'm not going to get back into it. I'm going to open a new cycle by picking one of the elements that I haven't talked about yet. So I can pick B or C. It makes no difference. Let's think about B. Where does B go? Well, B can't go to A, E, or D because this was a closed cycle. I already considered where all three of these elements end up. So B can't go to one of those spots. So it's got to go somewhere else, which is what makes these cycles distinct. Turns out that B goes to C. And C goes back to B, so I can close that cycle. I've now listed all five elements. What I've managed to do is write this randomly chosen permutation as a product of distinct cycles. And there's nothing special about this randomly, quasi-randomly chosen permutation. Um, you can do that for any permutation. You can write it as a product of distinct cycles. And that fact will be what you need to know to answer this question. Because you don't want to consider all the different elements in this group. This group has 120 elements in it. Where, how do I know it has 120 elements? Because five factorial is 120. Why five factorial? Well, think about what a permutation is. You're first asking yourself, where does A go? How many options do you have? You got five options. A can go to A, B, C, D, or E, any of those five. And then think about where B goes. You have four options left, because B can't go wherever you sent A. And then three options, two options, one options. So I have 120 objects, or 120 elements in this group. 120 different ways I can shuffle up these five letters right here. Then the question is, what is the largest order of those 120 elements? So I suppose you could list out all 120 elements and then think about which one has the largest order. You don't want to do that, obviously. Um, the order of an element is the number of times you apply that element to get back to the identity. And so the way you can answer that question is taking advantage of the fact that any element, any permutation can be written as a product of distinct cycles. So they can all look kind of like this. I could write one as A, B, C, D, E. That's perfectly fine. Take A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, E back to A. What would be the order of this thing? Well, it's fairly obvious that you'd have to apply this thing five times to get to the identity. A would go to B, and then the next step would move over to C, and then over to D, and then E, and then back over to A. This order is five. But that's not the answer to the question, right? The question is asking you, what is the largest order of an element? It's not necessarily this. But think about what other elements look like. Elements are just products of distinct cycles. So think about how you can, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How you can break up these elements. That's not the word I'm looking for. It's going to drive me crazy. How can you partition these elements into cycles? You know, I could have a three cycle and a two cycle. I could have a four cycle and leave an element alone. I could have, so for example, I don't know, D, C, fine. I could do that and then leave the E alone, which you could write like this, but you don't have to. Uh, what would be the order here? 
Well, if you think about it for a little while, maybe you'll figure out it before because I would have to cycle through this guy and this thing never changes. Um, well, I guess I could also come up with something that looks like this. Let's do, I already have one written here. I guess I don't need to cross it out. I can erase. What about this guy right here? What would this guy's order be? Well, if I apply this guy once, it, shuffle, it screws everything up and now it looks like this. If I apply this guy twice, note because I have this two cycle here, the B would go to a C, but then after I apply it again, the C would go back to a B. Oh, nice, I'm fixing things. The C would go to a B, but then when I apply it again, that B would go to a C. Looks like I'm fixing things. Do I get all the way back here? Does A end up back at A? No, nah, because A goes to E, and then in the next step, E goes to D. So I'd look something like that. D goes to A, and then A goes to E. So this D would go from down to A and then over to E. And then finally, E goes to D and D goes to A. I'd end up here. If I applied this thing twice, I'd get here, which is not the identity. So this does not have order two. Order two got me through this cycle, but it didn't get me through this cycle. What I need is to get through both of these cycles. If I apply this three times, now I've gotten through this cycle, but I've screwed this one back up. If I'd apply this three times, and the A, the E, and the D will all end up exactly where they're supposed to, but the B and the C will be switched because I've gone through this cycle because I've applied it three times, but now I've done this two cycle three times, so I'm kind of off pattern. What I'm trying to get at here is that you can figure out the order of any element in a permutation group by just taking the least common multiple of the number of elements in each partition and each of the number of elements in each of the distinct cycles. This will be back to normal every three times. This will be back to normal every two times. So every six times, both of these will be back to normal. So then the question is, can you get more than six? Well, think about this. You have five objects. How can you partition them? You can make a group of three and a group of two. You can make a group of five, a group of four and a group of one, a group of two, two, and one. But the least common multiple of two, two, and one is just two. So that would have a much smaller order. Uh, I think what you'll see is that the largest order you can get is from this partition right here. And this partition right here leaves me with order six. So the largest order of an element in the group of permutations of five objects would be six. If you had six objects, maybe I'm beating this to death, the order, because I think it's interesting. If six objects, your answer would change. So think about it, how would it change? Oh, right, I could do three and three. No, don't do three and three. The reason why is because the order here would just be the least common multiple of three and three, which would just have order three. Uh, so I gotta get more clever about it. Well, I could do three and two and then leave one fixed. That would have order six. If I did a three cycle, a two cycle and left one element fixed, can I do any better than that? Well, I could do a four cycle and a two cycle. No, because that least common multiple is just four. Um, I could do a two cycle, a two cycle, and a two cycle. Yeah, that wouldn't help a whole lot. That least common multiple would be two in that case. Um, I could get a five cycle and leave one element fixed, but that least common multiple would be five. In fact, the order will be six again. Uh, this is kind of an interesting topic. This is called, I think it's Landau's function or something that tells you the smallest, it answers this question, uh, and it's a function, so the input is the number of objects that you have. And so, I don't know, if you're interested in this and you want to look it up, go for it. But for the sake of this test, if you're just answering this question, um, knowing this fact, if you maybe you can figure out that the, the six, let's write one more step here, least common multiple of two and three is equal to six. Three coming from these three elements, two coming from these three elements.